I hope in the prior videos you've come to appreciate that QAQC is a lifestyle, not just plotting a few diagrams and sending out an all clear to the team. Here, we are assuming that your program is nearly set and now you are choosing the final steps as to how you're going to assess the data. Note that this is not a comprehensive guide to QAQC plots, but rather some of the more common ones that you will come across. If you're working for a company, it should have its own internal QAQC procedures. If you have been tasked with creating a QAQC program, there are consultants available that can assist you with this. But now to the good stuff. This is not an exhaustive list of QAQC plots like I said before. Um, I would definitely see quality control in mineral exploration. Um, you just Google that by Smeen Associates um, and that gives a great amount of additional information. Um, and then also I just want to point out that this module does not cover what to do with historic data sets, which is, to put it lightly, a dumpster fire. I would be remiss to discuss plotting QAQC in a real world setting without mentioning that your geochem database management system, which should not be an Excel file on your computer. This database should capture as much information as possible about the samples. And this point is critical. Just having gold PPM or CU underscore PPM, it's meaningless, especially when dealing with historic data sets. So for example, you can see here, you have all the information about the survey, um, definitely where your location is, what your um, what region you are, say WGS 19 versus WGS 18, even that is very different. Um, also, the, uh, what lab you did it in, different labs, even if you're doing an aquaregia at one lab, it does differ from lab to lab. So having that information is going to be really important, especially down the line when people are interpreting this. Um, what the samples are, is it QAQC sample? Is it a regular sample? Um, information about, again, the site ID, this would be uh, preparation uh, lab uh, samples. And then over here, what are the different bundles that you use from the lab? And then finally, just your, I mean, I think I blended this together before, but your all the information about, about your point locations. Everything is important. Everything that was given to you from the lab is important to record. Even when you see a uh, weight of samples, that could give you information about, say, uh, water content. So record everything, keep everything, and don't just store it as an Excel file on your computer because, you know, one day you may leave a company and they may no longer have that data. I could go on about this, but um, yeah, get a database. The first one we're gonna chat about are blank control charts. A technique for checking blank data is to use a simple vertical bar chart where the blank samples are plotted in order of analysis as the vertical bars represent the reported concentration. So axes here would be concentration. This I have here is arsenic PPM. This is the analyses in order. For samples reported as below the limit of detection, the accepted practice is to plot their bars as half the limit of detection. So here you can see the detection limit is 10 PPM. So anything that says it's below detection limit or a BDL or less than 10 ppm, the way you would plot it in a geochemical plot, there's many different ways that you could do it. Um, but one uh, way in the way that we're just recommending here is just to take half of the detection limit. So these would all be 5 ppm. Thresholds on the plot are defined as either control limits or specification limits, depending on the significance of the level of uh, elements concentration in the preparation blank. Uh, so here, the green line you have is the detection limit, 10 ppm, like we talked about. And the threshold that we put here um, is a three times the lower limit of detection, or uh, in this case, 30 ppm. It's important to check all elements. You don't want to pick up any spurious correlations, but in particular, uh, attention is definitely paid to the elements of interest in the project. Um, in general, for exploration samples where concentrations are typically low magnitude, threshold or control limit is defined as three times the quoted lower limit of detection. Um, and so really when looking at this diagram, 
everything here is doing fine, um, except for here, we can see that this one, number 20 in pink, um, this is going to be considered a failure. It's going to require further investigation, um, looking at the data, and then, if necessary, checking in with the lab. And like I said before, remember, the lab is your partner. An individual reference material control chart is generated for each individual analyte for each individual reference material. The chart simply pl uh, plots the measured value of a reference material against a known or certified value, often referred to as the mean, and one or more forms of acceptance limits. So for instance, in green here, you can see that this is the mean, and each of these are the uh, individual reference material points that you've taken at the lab. And on the, the x-axis, truly are the analyses in order. And also important to note in the gray lines are the batches. So this is just how the, um, the lab is, is taking these and, and analyzing them, which batch they go in. For this, the acceptance limits. Um, so you have the control limits, which are used to determine if the process or analysis is within acceptable statistical control based on varying multiples of a known standard deviation of the material, typically using limits at plus or two uh, standard deviations as a warning, and plus or minus three as a failure. So you see these in, in pink and the failure in, in red over here. Specification limits, they're used to determine a process or analysis um, is functioning within the required specification. Acceptable practice to use the limits of plus or minus 5% to plus or minus 10% of the mean as acceptance limits. Typically, both sets of these lines are plotted on the control chart. Ideally, the plus or minus five value should sit within the plus or minus two to plus or minus three standard deviations of the range. If the material in use has two standard deviations in excess of 5%, the material is probably not appropriate as a control. So like we chatted about green line, this is the, the, the recommended or the mean of the accepted value orange line. Those are the accepted value plus or minus two times the standard deviation of the reference material. Red line, this is plus or minus three times. So above here is, is your failure. And then in pink, that's the plus or minus 5% of the value specification uh, limit. Uh, you have the blue dots. Um, these are just the samples measured in order of analysis. Red, this is uh, a failure. Um, and then the orange dot, um, this is also, um, this one is also a failure. And here you have um, two reference materials in one batch that are greater than two standard deviations. So this one was only in just in one batch, but these ones, there's, there's probably something more, to, even more to investigate within this batch. Even this blue one is a little bit kind of close for all of our leggings. So lastly, talking about duplicates. Um, the XY duplicate plot is a very simple plot whereby you plot the duplicate versus the sample. So you have the duplicate versus the sample. If there are samples that are far off of this uh, regression line, it could indicate that ordering the sample was done improperly. So for instance, you, uh, your, your duplicates for you know, sample 31, 32, 33, 34, and your duplicate was sample 33, but you put it in position for uh, sample number 60. So that could just be you had an error in that, or it could also be due to a nugget effect. Um, it's considered a, the least useful plot because it's really difficult to assess the data. You know, you can see, okay, everything plotted on the line, which is great, except for this one. Um, but if there's a lot of things off the line, it would just be really onerous to to uh, continue to look in, into each point and, and see what the problem was. So that said, um, this one, the mean percentage difference uh, plot is what is more commonly used for duplicates. Um, the data is plotted as a percent difference relative to the mean, which is uh, along the y-axis. The, y, the, the mean is in uh, green here. Specification limits are added to the graph at respective plus or minus 20, plus or minus 10. It depends on what is important for your program. Here we've done plus or minus 10% uh, from the mean. In addition, on these plots, you can also add, um, 
You can add some vertical lines if you have, say, a cutoff, um, just to help with the visualization of the data. Um, as you can see here, you have the mean copper percentage here. This is the way that you would calculate that along the x-axis, just half of the original plus the duplicate. Um, whereas on the y-axis, you have the mean percentage difference uh, up here, and that is a little bit more complicated, but not a very complicated uh, equation at all. I just think it'd be a bit weird to say it out loud, but hopefully you've had enough time to take a look. Um, and that's the basic uh, construction of a plot. Since the original and duplicate samples are analyzed at the same time within the same batch of samples in the same laboratory with the same analytical technique, the data should demonstrate no bias or should be roughly an equal number of points above and below the zero line. The zero line being in here, this green line. Should any bias be evident, it's a cause for concern and it requires follow-up. So especially over here, you have a lot of you know, movement from this line. So this is definitely a cause for some concern and some follow-up. Note that at low concentrations, approaching the limit of detection of the analytical technique used for the analysis, the data begins to fan out as the error becomes increasingly relatively larger. So here, going back to my previous statement, you can see that because we're approaching zero here, zero percent or lower, closer to the detection limit, these data points are always going to be a little bit weird because the this is the equation kind of falls over on itself at low limits of detection. Um, so anything though above the limit, like a little lower limit of detection, is going to be plotting just fine. And you can see here how now when we have higher samples, uh, higher quantities um, concentrations, I'm sorry, uh, you can see that this is starting to uh, to do its job and everything here. The samples are fine. They're plotting within plus or minus 10% uh, MPD. So I hope that now you have a greater understanding of how to perform a rigorous QAQC geochemical program. And when in doubt, ask a geochemist for help.